So it's seven o'clock. I'd like to welcome all of you to this special evening of the Together 2021 Disability History Month Festival. It's the first of our performances, but by no means the last. And it's very much a welcome back to Sign Dance Collective. Sign Dance Collective are an international dance company who performed at our very first festival during the London 2012 Paralympics, performing outside in St John's Churchyard, right in the middle of Stratford. They've been back regularly ever since and very much become festival favourites. And I like to think that we, they have a sort of, you know, warm spot for us as well, because they keep doing things that they perhaps wouldn't do for other people, like take this outdoor performance and bring it indoors and do it on Zoom. And we're going to see performers from Croatia, Graz in Austria, and Tower Hamlets just up the road from where I am in Canning Town, all coming together to just introduce you and tell you more and preview excerpts from their new show, Oriente Plus. But first, I'd like to pay tribute to a company member who isn't with us this evening, Lionel M. McCauley. Lionel came over to London with the company in 2017. He performed with the company. He led a very successful workshop with the company. And he also did me the great honour of being my companion to go to what was a wonderful evening at Tate Modern as they launched very aptly the Black American Artists Exhibition. I last spoke to Lionel in August 2020, and of course, Black Lives Matter was very much the subject of the conversation, and it's the co subject of the spoken word piece that we're going to hear in a minute. And I say that partly because if you, you know, if this is a triggering subject for you, it's a five-minute film. You know, get a quick cup of tea, come back for the rest of the evening. Lionel should have been starring in our opening last year. Sign Dance Collective had a show that was based around one of his spoken word pieces, but we lost him very suddenly in September to, well, all killings are senseless, but a senseless killing, you know, by people he didn't know. Was he in the wrong place at the wrong time? No, I think life is more dangerous for our young men than that. And I think all of us who've got young men, young black men particularly in our lives, you know, are always concerned and always worried that these things will happen to them too. When I was talking to Lionel about Black Lives Matter, it was also in the context of somebody dying whilst being arrested less than a quarter of a mile from where I am now. And again, I think that was a real shock. It wasn't something that I expected, although, of course, we know that our young men in particular in Newham are very, very vulnerable. So I'd like to play you the month of June by Lionel M. M. McCorney. Lionel's much missed. He will certainly never be forgotten. And although he was very young when we lost him, he left behind a very, very mature body of work. So just give me a moment to share my screen and then we should have the video. As of June 30th, 2020, a total of 506 civilians shot and killed by police, 105 of them being black, of course. In 2018, there were like 996 total police shootings. Black people have the highest rates than any other ethnicity to be murdered by the hands of authority. Now it's the month of July and police shootings are still increasing. At the same time, looting sneakers are still ceasing increasing. But can you blame us? They try to frame us and then tame us into oppression from adolescence. And you wonder why we're so aggressive, why you're still possessive. I'm talking financial and economic slavery. 
Let's acknowledge the bravery of our indigenous people who founded America. Not Chris, oh, I mean Christian Columbus. When Columbus sailed that ocean blue in 1492, there were still 1,400 men and women being held in captivity. I bet most never even had a clue. You're too worried about how many Andrew Jacksons you have in your pocket, man. Google the Trail of Tears. We're talking hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of Americans being slaughtered by other Americans after they stole our faith and used our babies as alligator baits. I mean, it's nothing different from what's going on in the world today. Hey, we live in the United States of America. Oh, the irony. Let's not forget about those public servants that pull out that iron, see? When he pulled that black man over, he didn't know what to do. That pig skin made him feel like a giant, so I guess he thought this Mac could do. What else I'ma do besides try to free you? Why? they're still financially free free to tweet what he wants make racist remarks grow married women and their private parts i mean it's always been like that from the start so i had to start analyzing the alliances of this supremacist just to realize that the analogy of the atrocities are all from the atmosphere of his anarchy man i wish my boy dominic was here with us right now because he'll be right there on the front line trying to dominate but hold on you're gonna get saved today because one of us has to pave the way through faith and praise so brianna taylor can start singing amazing grace it's time to put out an apb on the kentucky pd see you kill the queen an emt oh that's tmi karen you must think that we care enough about what you think because that man put his knee to his neck and didn't even blink 846 that's for the next eight birthdays her father will miss in exchange for the cop getting six years man my people are sick and i'm not just talking about corona we're sick of our people going to the corridor. We just want to walk through the corridor of justice and peace, but we get no justice, no peace with racist police. That man died jogging in the streets. They wanted Ahmad Berry seven months into the year now of the rest of people's lives. How can we change each other's lives one step at a time? I use my words to educate my kings and queens, the new generation, no matter the gender of gentrification. Take it back to our African roots, all in the month of June. June, June, June. White fear violence from us. We do not have a history of killing white people. White people have a history of killing us. And what you fear, and it's a deep guilt thing, that white folks suffer, you are afraid that if we ever come to power, we will do to you and your father what you and your people have done to us. And I think you are judging us by the state of your own mind, and that is not necessarily the mind of black people. So thank you, Lionel. Much missed, but never forgotten. So next, I'm delighted to introduce Oriente Plus or Oriente Plus, we'll find out in a moment. What I'm going to do first is play a short video which will act as an introduction to the project. Um, but first, I'd just like to say in the chat, Emily is saying, wow, that's so moving and powerful. Yes, all of Lionel's work is moving and powerful. You can find some of it on Facebook. You can find quite a lot linked in to the, the Sign Dance Collective um, website. So yes, Lionel M. McCauley, do check him out. But now I'm going to screen share again. So bear with me just a moment and um, we will see the introductory video. This is a new show by Sign Dance Collective and it's a uh, Caribbean story about families. This particular family is really different because it's made up of humans and animals living together in one. We asked Pedro de, de Sena to write a script based on a series of conversations that we had with a group of artists during the lockdown. We, we interviewed people from all over the world, asking them about their homeland and about their displacement or placement, things like that. We worked a lot on Caribbean culture and the diaspora and how the Caribbean, how Caribbean people have kind of spread out and their in, in, influence on the world, on culture, on, on life, and how, as a Caribbean person myself, for example, feels out of home. It's a story about relationships and it's very ethereal and lots of images to do with poetry and lots of metaphors. 
and there's two main animals in the piece, a serpent and a vulture. Anna is M's daughter. She is a character that's connected to both the vultures and the serpent, which is David's character. She is black, she's queer, and she is a woman. So she's a, tri a triple minority. The serpent represents not only the family, but also progressive thinking. So that's why these characters are mostly uh, connected. I feel very connected as a vulture. This is a, an, an animal family with a snake, and then a big fa family also with the human. This week we're in the, the third phase of Oriente Plus. We had an R&D and this is the first production phase. This week we're look, looking more at specific things about the relationship between the characters and how we can build those relationships as a family, um, as this very strange family. So now, now we hope to have quite a lot of character understanding, understanding of the, the possibility of movement, understanding of the real possibilities of song and music and, um, and sign theatre. These are themes that have to be talked about and be shown on theater, not just what you usually see on like the West End, for example. These things have meaning and people should see these things and think about them. My mom died in December and um, when we were creating this work, she actually contributed some songs. Pedro amazingly took one of her songs and it's it's in the show. So that's really a big thing for me. I mean, my mom was an amazing musician, but she like she lived in the United States for 50 some years and she never spoke English at all. So she was like, you know, a, a Cuban woman, really kind of out of her culture co completely, but she, was able to contribute a lot to people and to the world through her music. And that's, that's important for me. Thank you very much indeed, Sign Dance Collective. And now I would like to introduce you to them in person. We have Isolta from Croatia. We have David from Croatia. We have Lila from Graz in Austria and we have Ivani just up the road in Tower Hamlets. So without further ado, I'm going to switch my camera off and pass you over to the Dance Collective. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we're the Sang Dance Collective and we're very pleased to be here with you this evening uh, to share with you uh, our artistic um, uh, process and where we are at the moment in terms of the work. Um, uh, we, we have made new, uh, yeah, the, the other thing is, is also, um, if, despite the fact that it's been a very difficult time for, for all of us, um this this year we've been quite sort of uh creative um, and um, a lot of things have happened uh so 
and I just hope that everybody here tonight is okay and that you're feeling okay and things are uh, going well for you. Um, I think this evening we would like to share with you a small excerpt of uh, Oriente Plus and uh, just to give you an idea of, uh, of, of where we are at the moment and it's a really exciting uh, project for me personally as a deaf person because uh, we've really explored uh, the relationship of sign language, speech and music and performance together in a way which has sort of uh, gone a lot deeper and further than um, perhaps uh, so far. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into position and uh, present to you an excerpt of the Oriente Press. Okay. Growing myself into you at daylight. Thinking of you at sundown. Talking of you when it's allowed, who loves you. Who wants you? Who needs you? I do. With every part of me in the silence of my being, with every pore of my skin that speaks and sings of our love, as long as I'm alive, I will always love you. I will always love you. Votándome en ti hasta el amanecer. Pensando en ti hasta el anochecer. Hablando de ti cuando se pueda. Con quien te ama, con quien te quiere, con quien te ama, 
¿Quién te quiere? En cada nota, cada croma o silencio de tu ser. Se derraman los cantantes que viven bajo de mi piel. Por eso yo siempre te voy a querer. Por eso yo siempre te voy a querer. Por eso yo siempre te voy a querer. Por eso yo siempre te voy a querer en mi vida. Tú mi vida. En mi vida. Tú mi vida. En mi vida. Tú mi vida. Por eso yo siempre te voy a tener. This is a story about the things that bring us together, even when the world tears us apart. This is a story about poetry, music, and art, and culture. A story that moves in its own way. The newest, snake-like, circling and gliding through the air like a vulture. This is a story about a mother and daughter losing themselves and finding each other again through the stories of all the mothers and daughters that came before them and made them who they are. This is a Caribbean story, a story of power cuts and ocean crossings. <sighs> of haunted bodies and dancing souls. Mi mama, she always used to sing that song to me when I was little, especially when there were power cuts 
of which there were many. I remember a lot of darkness in those days, but in the darkness, music and the promise, la promesa de la luz, the promise of light. We would always clap for light. When it got cut off, we would clap to make it come back. There was a simple power in this action. Now, you try. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> See, it's like there's so much light in the room already. So this song is completely new. Lila, can you put your mic on? It's on? Now it's on. This is a completely new song for this show. We've never done it before in front of an audience. It's called Pajaros. And it's, a, it's it was written by a musician from Cuba, from Cuba, Cuba, uh, Cuba. His name is David Omni. Lila, Lila uh, and I worked on it at about six o'clock in the morning and we came up with this version of it. So it's really exciting to show you this last little bit we'll share from Oriente Plus. Okay. Caminando por mi pueblo, que entiendo, que entiendo cómo se derraman los cantantes de mi piel. Caminando, escuchando, esperando, esperando. ¿Cómo voy a llegar? ¿Cómo voy a llegar? Que se me pierden, se me pierden, se me pierden los años. Así. Ah, así. Caminando por mi pueblo, ¿cómo voy a pensar que están haciendo así? Ah, 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 ah. Esperando.
Uh, and now um, I'd like to uh, pass you over to Resort. Um, I think we're having a question Q and A, Q and A, right? And I will pass it over to Jude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is ask Chris to switch her video on. And I'm just going to spotlight you again, Chris. Right, so I don't know where to start apart from to say thank you and congratulations. I thought that was beautiful. And it was just making me think about so many different things that I didn't know. Like I said, I don't know where to start. But I think I'm going to say, tell me more about the song, Isolta, and also about the words, because unfortunately I only speak English and French. So um, the song is called Pajaros. And... Um, it, it, when David Omni, can you guys hear me all right? It's good. So when um, he was writing part of the music because Leela and David Omni and um, another writer from Nigeria wrote the, the had written the music for the, for the show and my mom. And uh, when he was writing this, the music, he went to my village where I was born in Cuba, in Oriente, in Santiago de Oriente. And he sent us this track with like the nature in my, where I'm from. And he recorded birds and, and the wind and the grass, like the wind rushing through the grass. And it's very beautiful there, it's very lush. And this song is about longing for my family, for my culture, because I, I am now 62 years old and I left Cuba when I was nine. And it always, it also reminds me of my mom who never got to go back home. So when I say esperando por mi pueblo, I'm waiting for my people and my people are waiting for me. And although I can, of course I can go to Miami, <laughs> but it, it, I think land is very potent and where you are from, is very important. Um, it never leaves you, and it's something that I feel that I feel very culturally Car Caribbean. And this song is called Pajaros because the soundtrack and the feeling of it is all about nature and how in Cuba we're very close to nature um, still. So yeah, that's it. And I think that's something that lots of people in East London can relate to very directly as well so the song that your mother wrote yes my the song my mom wrote was like a few months before she died and um it, it was really funny because she said it's she sings te quiero alma mia i love you my heart hasta que se acabe el mundo until the end of the earth Te quiero, alma mía, te quiero poco a poco. I love you little by little, which which I always thought, what is she saying? Why does she say I love you little by little? And I think, and I asked her and she said, I mean that I got to love you and you got to love me so much. And it was kind of like that because we were, she was a musician and I'm an artist and it was like, uh, but it was like, we always found our love through music and through through our art so that's it's very cool that her her work is inside the show yeah absolutely and um and condolences again i know that was a great loss and you were kind enough while it was going on to come and speak at our film festival which um i thought was very very professional and very much appreciated but um anyway the next thing that i really want to ask about is the animals and the birds, you know, you were just saying, you know, that people in Cuba still live very close to nature. But I know when you, in the um, introductory video, and it's a story about a family that also includes animals. And we've been locked down here for over 18 months with two dogs and five cats. 
and a tank full of fish of fluctuating numbers. So I really, really relate to that. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? And I was so interested in David as the snake and, you know, why the snake and why Lila the vulture? Lila, you want to talk about your character? <laughs> Yeah, um, the vulture is a traditional animal, like the snake is. So they symbolize um, a lot of tradition. And there is a lot of meaning in this relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't come across, I mean, I suppose because we don't have vultures in the UK and I'm from Essex, but um, no, I haven't come across the vulture as a symbolic animal in the way that, you know, you think of snakes or owls or foxes. So I don't know if one of you wants to tell me a bit more about it or what part it plays in the sort of the full story, the full show. David, David, do you understand? Yes. Um, talk, talk. Maybe you and Ivani can talk about the vultures and the snakes, the vultures and the snakes. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. uh, 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 I always have this image in my head of uh, a vulture and a snake in a kind of a yin and yang uh, struggle. Um, um, I think it's quite mythological. Um, yeah, no, the same uh, growing up in uh, Wales and uh, the UK. Uh, but the snake, snake and the vulture are, are not really um, uh, animals that you'd find in the UK, but you do get adder. Um, so, but uh, they have, uh, they hold uh, like an archetypal mythological image, I think. Um, um in in in, uh, in there so i, I mean uh, uh, there's uh, gabriel garcia Matisse who wrote uh, 100 years of solitude and this is a magical realism of um and i, I think i think oriente plus is all, is uh, aspiring uh, to be magical realism so, uh, uh, and it, as um, Oak General said in the, the film, there's a lot of uh, metaphor and symbology within uh, the work. And it's still in development, it's still growing. Uh, the script is still being uh, worked on. Uh, so it's, it's really, it's really um, interesting to see how, how the piece is coming together. Yes, I loved the snake movements and I also enjoyed where Leela had the flute coming in like a snake as well into the image. Ivana, you want to talk about how your, relate, how your character relates? Your microphone's off his altar. Oh. Maybe. Ivani, talk about how the, how the serpent and, and Anna are related. Okay, so... The serpent and Anna are related because the serpent represents, like, like Leela said, it also represents tradition, but also re represents pro progressive thinking. So Anna is the um, is the baby of the of the family. She is black. She is queer. She is an apologetic of who she is, and she represents the uh, the world how it is now. Because like uh, the world is more open is more um, how do I explain more diverse um, and the relationship between her the snake and the vulture is this vulture represents tradition which is the the cons more conservative conservative aspect of the world and the snake might coexist with that aspect but also it, it strives for for the future and it's interesting what David said about mythology because it reminds me of Norse mythology where the snake, the tree and the and the bird in, are involved. Because in, in that mythology, the, the snake uh, envelops the world and the world represents past, present and future, which is 
uh, old values, present values, and future values. And the snake is, I mean, and the and the bird is more connected to past values. I was just wondering if I could reach my cane, and I can't. But it's um, it's got a snake. It's a wooden cane with the snake kind of carved into it coming up, and um, yes, pimped by me so that it's now purple and glittery as well. But um, like I said, it's just out of reach, so I can't share that with I you. I was thinking about the relationship between the, the family and the, the animals and the, peop and the people, and how, you know, how we live with animals in in the caribbean and how in in india for example it, animals just come in and out and you know it's it's all so natural but we 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 kind of have got used to keeping them out and it's it's really weird but um i think julie was asking a question about what does oriente plus mean yes and i'd like to encourage everybody and remind you you can t there's two ways that you can communicate in writing there's a q a box because we've got the posh webinar system or you can just use the live chat to find the live chat you go to view at the top of your screen and click on view live chat with the q a the bottom it's in your control bar which is either going to be at the top or bottom of your screen and it's on the right hand side or if you want to have your camera on and speak because typing's difficult you can raise your hand which is a little hand symbol on your controls but in the meantime yes what does oriente plus translate to in english and what was the thinking behind the title it's 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 my see, title um, i can see one question Michelle. What is what is thinking behind the title Oriente Plus? Where does that come from? Did you get that? Yes. Um, I I was talking with Lionel about the show, about this show, about a year and a half before before we started it, and he was very much into the Caribbean and Caribbean culture, and in fact, he. Um, he he visited the Caribbean. It was the last holiday that he had. And we were thinking about titles. And I said, I really love the title Oriente because like when they discovered Cuba, they called Oriente, like they thought they were in the Orient, but they were actually in the Caribbean. But where I'm from is called Santiago de Oriente. And so we called it Oriente Plus because it's about the diaspora and we are all from the diaspora. I mean, we're all diasporic. We all come from somewhere else. So Ly Lionel and I called it Oriente Plus and it's kind of stuck, but then Pedro very cleverly put slash uh, power cut. So it has a, you know, du that come double title. Sorry, I was really, I was absolutely fascinated till I got to the end and then I got slightly confused again. But of course, going back to Oriente Plus, of course, that's why people refer to the West Indies, isn't it? Because they sailed in the opposite direction and thought that's where they derived. That's right. That's right. They called it Oriente, the Orient. And where I'm from, I mean, yeah, it couldn't be more different, but okay. <laughs> Europeans, yeah. what can you do? So the next question I wanted to jump in and ask, oh, Julie says that makes so much sense. Thank you. So I'm really interested about this way of bringing outdoor arts into the home. It's something that we very much did ourselves over the summer. We had our entire carnival program indoors with people making their own costumes in the kitchen, using kitchen recycling and filming their own dances on phones and then sending it all to us to mix together for Hackney Carnival at home. And up until that point, I would not have thought you could do outdoor arts in your kitchen, but you can. And as you've proved this year and last year, you can indeed do outdoor arts individually in your homes and still come together to perform. But when you agreed in very late notice to um, come and perform for us, well, you know, how did you, what did you do? How did you sort of go about creating this wonderful 
performance where people are in three different countries? I'll, should I answer that, you guys? So it was really not easy at all. <laughs> but I thought there are some little sections that we can kind of divide up and we can't sing together on Zoom. And Ivani and I have things together and Ivani and I split, the, split up the lines. There's actually quite a lot of harmony in our singing together. And then David is the narrator. The snake is the, the serpent is the narrator. So because you have a central storyteller, that was like my, I thought we'll just put him in the middle and then everything can go around. And then of course we, because we have Leela on flute, which I think comes over easily in this medium, it was quite lucky. And then, when we were rehearsing, we decided to go into different different windows because David is downstairs. Yes, Julie's <laughs> downstairs, <laughs> along with two dogs and assorted cats. I've got two more cats bouncing around, so if the camera suddenly shakes, then as usual, they've just leapt straight on us. I loved your mood. I mean... I know it's part of the choreography, but I found your movement really, really mesmerizing, Ivani. I mean, do you want to tell us a bit more about the choreography? Oh, okay. Um, so um, these movements are completely new. They were created on the fly because our we had to change the whole show to this platform here because we we actually rehearsed all together when when we start devising uh, the show. So we were, we were we rehearsed in person, as you've seen in the video, in, in Croatia and in Graz as well. So all of this that I've just done is like having everything that we did we did in mind and try to devise something that's interesting visually for, for all of y'all to see. Well, I think it just worked beautifully because the embodiment was in a way even more powerful because you were all in different windows coming from different places. It didn't diminish it. It actually, it changed it. I mean, I think that's the thing, you know, what we have, you know, we haven't watched an outdoor performance. You know, we've watched a unique kind of cross continents wonderful performance and you must be the most covid secure company in the world because you either perform outdoors or you perform on zoom you know you can't say it much fairer than that but of course i'm delighted you're performing on zoom because yes it's been a very long time since i've been out and it will unless you come and dance outside my front door i think it will be quite some time before i see outdoor arts again so we've just got another five minutes if anybody else has got things they want to contribute Tribute, please let us know either by pressing the raise hand thing or typing into the live chat and otherwise I'm going to take full advantage of my position on the microphone and ask Leela can you tell us a bit more about the the flute playing and the music I mean we've seen you perform in East London over a number of years and of course on zoom last year and you seem to play a lot of instruments, but you're obviously, as a musician, still very, very much core to this company. And it must be a really interesting relationship as well. Yeah, uh, as is all said for this project, we worked with uh, two other musicians and David Omni from Cuba has sent like digital tracks. So, this was interesting to make like analog or unplugged sounds and singing out of this very uh, well, well digital soundscapes he has sent us, very inspiring. So, yeah. And there was some digital sound as well, wasn't there? Um, not now. There are no digital sounds in the performance. 
That's so interesting because I thought I could hear the waves at one point, but that's obviously just the power of the performance. So the final question I want to ask is what next? I know you're looking for funding to extend the project. So what are the plans? So we just uh, carry on the work um, So yeah, we, we go into rehearsal again in um in at the at the end of February. Yes. Um, and we will end up at the Cockpit Theatre in London for the first um, public preview. And so then we go, we go touring, we go to the Brighton Festival, yay. Um, and to lots of different places. I think there's like five or six performances in Europe already. And I know there's about seven or eight UK venues lined up. And we're very excited about this project. There's an Italian actress coming on board who trained in London and trained with Pina Bausch and with Lecoq. So we're excited to, to welcome her as well. Yeah. So it sounds like next year, if you're able to go out into in-person activities, wherever you're watching this on Zoom, YouTube or later video, you will be able to see Sign Dance Collective. Is there a mailing list people can sign up to? If people go onto our website, SignDanceCollectiveInternational.com, um, there is a, we can respond to your, your queries. And there will be a, a touring list and there will be a, um, a streaming partner for the outdoor shows. Fantastic. So Janet Alexander is just saying, really enjoyed seeing this beautiful thank you, Janet. And um, Glory Sango remembers you all from previous years and says, hi, Lila, hi, Julie, and hi, Ju. Oh, sweet. She particularly remembers Lila, and I certainly remember her beautiful guitar playing. <clears throat> amongst other things. So we've just been joined by Julie Newman, our chair, and no doubt at least two dogs. Did you want to put your microphone on and say a few words, Julie? Yes, I mean, I think given the, um, the influence of the animals upon the performance, I think it's quite fitting that at this stage, the two dogs have just woken up and are dancing around enthusiastically um, wanting to express their, their, their enjoyment of this evening. It's lovely to see you all. Um, it's always a real treat. The work is beautiful as, as always as well. Um, and it's a real insight into how the work is developed by having you talking about it. And for that, I thank you very much indeed. But thank you so much for continuing to have a relationship with Together 2012. It means so much to us and you mean so much to us. So thank you so much. Yes, and I'd just like to add my thanks to that. Judy, you might want to just pop your microphone back off again if the dogs, if, if my dogs... I just, wanted, I just wanted to say that David said that he's ready to go perform at your doorstep in Newham. I can't wait. Um, Cheryl McClellan is also saying brilliant, powerful and passionate. Janet Alexander says my cat Felix came and sat on my knee and was very <laughs> interested in this too. And um, yes, there's been there's certainly been a whole range of animals participating. I mean, this is just such a unique experience. You know, it, it's very intimate. It's a real privilege for us to hear from you, to sort of see the work in this state, to be invited into your homes. We really do appreciate it so much. So a huge thanks to all of the company, including people like Pedro, who aren't here tonight. I don't know if you'd just like to... Um, Tell us the other people who've worked on the show, Isolta. Um, yeah, so Pedro de Sena and Tariq Ross Cameron wrote, Pedro wrote the script and Tariq wrote a lot of the poet, poetry. He's a, um, a Caribbean, British Caribbean poet from Birmingham. And actually the, the piece is, is really written with the whole company. So on, in lockdown, 
we worked with about eight artists plus lots of people from all over the world. So Subi um, Whitfield, who's our engagement, international engagement officer, w contacted lots of people from India, from Greece, from all over the world and interviewed them about what, dia what where are they from? What does their home mean to them? All these things. So all of that has come into the, the show. And then there's um, Ivani, myself, Leela, David, Sharon, and Rob, Robert Corcoran, who will be a digital um, bird. And we always say, oh. yeah, thank you very much to Rob for all your tech support and your help with the film this year and all the tech support for the show last year. I need to thank as well, well, I want to thank the National Lottery Community Fund and Arts Council England for our funding, without which we would not be operating. And a particularly big thank you to the National Lottery Community Fund, who managed to find some extra money, which is one of the reasons we can still afford to have global real-time captioning, providing captions for us tonight. Huge thank you too to Chris Burrow from Burrow Interpreting. Chris is a great festival favourite of Together's and we're just delighted that she's come back from her maternity leave and is working with us again this year. There's another message that's come by text from Kathleen Jackson saying thank you everybody for a wonderful evening. And man, I think that just sums it up. I can't wait to see more from Sign Dance Collective. I think all of the research and the very long process that goes into creating work, you could really tell because everything was just so rich. It was so rich in movement. It was so rich in meaning. It was so thoughtful. It had such emotional presence. You know, it really, really came across to us in a way that I think two years ago we would never have believed was possible. You know, never have believed was possible. But it's exactly eight o'clock. So I'm going to say thank you again to our audience and have a very good evening. <laughs>